But we just got data, as you know, on housing starts coming in a little bit under the expectation. At 546,000, the expectation was for 560,000. We did see a drop of 3.1 percent in building permits. I want to bring in now uh, to discuss these numbers. I want to bring in Guy Laba. He's the chief fixed income strategist at Janney Montgomery Scott. And Guy is a Bloomberg best on fixed income, uh, as well as other things. Guy, good to see you again. Hi, Betty. How's it going? Good, good. Okay, so what do you make of these numbers? You know, you might be starting to see, what, a work through of inventory here or what? Well, I think really what we're seeing right now is the effects of a plateau in demand once the government's home buyer tax credit has kind of expired. You know, we saw data yesterday on home builder sentiment, and well, there virtually is no home builder sentiment. Right. So as long as we're not seeing these home builders sell properties, they're not going to be building, and construction numbers are likely to remain pretty subdued for, I would expect, the remainder of 2010. Uh, it kind of sounds like a deadlock, though. You know, to, to a degree, you know, there's, there's a relatively low level of production, low level of building. There's also a low level of demand. So in order for any sort of uh, improvement in home building activity, we need to get a pickup in both sides of the equation, not really just one. And that'll take a while to be realized. Okay. All right. Well, then, okay, given all that, because I was talking with David Sokol yesterday, who, um, you know, knows a thing or two about housing because uh, as part of Berkshire, <laughs> he's the chairman of, uh, of John's Manville, which does roofing, insulation, and they're one of the biggest players there. Um, and, you know, he's saying, look, the home buyer is still just too leveraged right now. Um, and so you're not going to see a lot of movement in the housing market. Um, and he's talking about, look, in the next five years, if you, uh, you know, see economic growth here at 2 percent, you should be happy with that. And the same goes for the housing market. We're very much in the same camp. You know, we are expecting a slow level of economic growth led by a consumer that's stagnant to slightly improving. And housing is one of the factors that's weighing heavily on a consumer. When you're an individual who owns a property whose mortgage is greater than the value of the house, well, that makes it challenging to save on other things because you're concerned about specifically that house and not too much else. Right. Okay. All right. And Guy, uh, I know that you may be or you may be watching the developments over in D.C. Uh, as much as we are with, you know, they're all, all their plans on overhauling Fannie and Freddie, uh, you know, the idea is that we need to see more private capital in the housing market. Uh, what would you like to see happen? Well, I think for the short term, it's very, very challenging to make significant changes to Fannie and Freddie's business model, because today they account for the bulk of new mortgages being originated. Without them, home sales, both new and existing, would be far, far lower. So I, I think for the moment, we really need to see kind of the status quo maintained with regard to Fannie and Freddie in order just to keep the housing markets in some semblance of stability. Right. Re sort of reforming them at this point just isn't the right time. Okay. All right, Guy, we'll leave it there, but good to talk with you as always. Guy LeBas of Janney Montgomery. Scott.